Hello everyone and welcome back to Navis Nobleite. I am Captain Zelnick and today we are going to continue our ship overviews with the Cairn class tune ship for a monumental 500 points. What do we get for such a huge investment? Well, it is a 12 hit battleship with 20 centimeters speed. It turns at a 45 degree angle. It has a four up save for its shields, a six up all round armor and four turrets. It is equipped with a lightning arc that fires front left right at 30 centimeters, firepower 20. That really should give you an idea of the level of, fi of uh, incredible firepower we're dealing with. Even at 30 centimeters, this is enough to basically erase most ships. It has a star pulse generator, one hit per enemy at 20 centimeters all around. Goss particle whip at 45 centimeters, strength 6, front left right, and a portal, strength 3, range of 10 centimeters all around. It can also take a sepulcher for 50 points. Sepulchers are horrible and amazing little upgrades that automatically give the ship leadership 10 and emits out a pulse very similar to the star pulse generator that permanently damages enemy leadership. It is a wonderful little upgrade, and if you're taking a tomb ship, you're already putting 500 points into the dang thing, so there's no reason to not take a sepulcher. So, what are we really getting in this? Effectively, what we have is a gigantic ship deleter. This thing can walk up to any ship in the game, save maybe the Orc Hulk, and simply remove it from the board. Its unique ability to resist damage means that your reliance on brace for impact is heavily mitigated you really don't have to do a lot of braces for impact because generally speaking it already is braced for impact it has a four up save against literally anything an enemy throws at it its firepower is overwhelming uh it always counts as closing and a strength 20 uh firepower lightning arc is more than enough to effectively erase almost everything in the game. For the tougher things, there are still six Gauss Particle Whips that, on the roll of a six, completely ignore shields. Which, you know, ironically enough, makes it a little awkward. Do I want to fire this first before I fire the Lightning Arc? Who knows? Also, if a Gauss Particle Whip fires at an Eldar vessel and rolls a six, it ignores the Hollow Fields. So... Also, one very important thing, Star Pulse Generator ignores hollow fields, so it's wonderful to use against enemies uh, of the Eldar variety. So, it's the most powerful ship in the game. This is it. This is the single most lethal vessel in Battlefleet Gothic. It doesn't matter that it only has 30 centimeters or 45 centimeters on its direct fire weapons, because this thing can get close to an enemy with almost no problem. Yeah, sure, 20 centimeters is respectable for a battleship, but at the same time, it has uh, inertialist drives. You roll that all ahead full, you're not going additional 46, you're going D6 times 10 more centimeters. You can go anywhere on the board you like. And if you don't want to get close, you want to mosey along the board and make the enemy deal with the rest of your fleet, that's fine. That just means that it's a slow buildup to you effectively removing everything the, that the enemy, you know, loves and cares about. The Necron Tomb Ship has no peer. Even things like the Planet Killer think twice before engaging a Tomb Ship, because the Planet Killer can't stop this. The Planet Killer in all of its might does not stand a chance against the Tomb Ship. So, how do you beat it? That's the real question, you know. If this thing is so hyped up in the way that I've described it, well, I, there's, uh, my enemy's taken two tomb ships. What do I do? Here's the answer. Board the sucker. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be frickin' Tal. You know, board them. If you manage to get the advantage in a boarding action against the Necron vessel, they cannot make their living metal saves. They take damage that they cannot ignore. Boarding is the number one way of killing the tomb ship. So if you're a Space Marine player, your first order of business is getting as many strike cruisers into base-to-base -base contact with this thing. Doesn't matter if you lose half of them, so long as you get them there. And when you get them there, you board and then you cripple the thing. And usually a Necron player will disengage a tomb ship long before it gets destroyed. 
and if it is destroyed, you've effectively won the game. It doesn't matter if it explodes, because a, an exploded tomb ship is worth a thousand points. So long as it's a hulk, it's worth fifteen hundred points. So, yeah, you do not want to fear this thing too much it has its weaknesses but recognize that if your necron opponent slaps this thing on the board you know exactly what he's intending on doing with it and that's to make you rethink all of your life choices when you started playing battlefleet gothic it is now your job to turn that on him and make him cry into his own sepulcher while you're going around and smoking his tomb ship all right, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll talk to you all again soon.